everyone. We are talking about the dreaded postpartum shedding that happens after we have a baby. You've got this beautiful bundle of joy, but you have lost your hair. Or you've got this beautiful bundle of joy and you're experiencing hair loss and you don't know what the highs and lows of it are going to be and you are mortified. I got a request this evening from Tigress06, one of our lovely, lovely sisters, and she asked me about this topic. So I decided to present what I know on this topic and then to also research a few additional things just to see um, what other information I could find out other than what I already knew and also um, just to respond to the request for certain things. If you have a a particular topic that you want to know about please let me know on the channel and if I can get around to it I definitely will you know I love y'all guys and I want to welcome you to the channel and say hello if you're new thank you for subscribing liking and commenting and sharing we are the world we are a family so um, she submitted this request and I'm really glad because this is not a video I would have ever thought of doing however I remember going through hair loss two times during my pregnancies it actually was not that bad but during a time shortly after one of my pregnancies probably say well hell I could have still been in this so-called phenomena called telogen effluvium which is this this whole process that we're talking about now that I think about it because I had picked up a whole heck of a lot of weight I think it was actually it was it was shortly after probably this this process maybe a year after having a baby and not being able to get rid of the weight I lost a lot of hair after doing the Atkins diet and um, that might have been shortly after a pregnancy and that actually compounded the situation I lost a lot of hair so that's the first thing now that I'm actually talking about it it wasn't the first thing in my list but number one thing not to do um, that can contribute to hair loss after having a baby would be a diet that's like a, a ketosis diet uh, or a diet that puts you in a fat burning mode all times you want to be careful of doing anything that may put your body into a shock and you really want to be careful of, of, of focusing on eating healthy and balanced according to the way that we typically eat and typically we're not in a fat burning mode for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time so you want to avoid any fad diets or anything like that that's going to cause your body to have to make uh, uh, abrupt hormonal changes number two something else that you want to do to keep yourself from experiencing the morbidity of rapid hair loss during your pregnancy is you want to make sure you first relax you want to relax and accept that this is a natural hormonal process and it happens for a reason which I will explain in brief shortly but any stress any added stress during this time is not going to be healthy for you or for the baby and if you keep in mind that your hair is going to grow back then it can help to lighten the load and it, it won't be as bad as you might think it is provided you're not dealing with some other more serious types of uh, alopecia that are associated with pregnancy but beyond the typical uh, postpartum alopecia and that's one of the it kind of explain the process this phenomena where you lose a lot of hair is often referred to as uh, uh what is it tef tef teflogen elef telogen a telogen effluvium and what happens when you are pregnant all of your shedding slows and the 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 this the normal shedding that your hair would go through stops and that's why we get that luxurious thick hair during pregnancy i know my hair doubled in volume easily my hair was so thick and beautiful and long when i was pregnant and um, at the time I didn't have the locks but uh, the experience um, has some commonalities and then after you have the baby what happens is all of those hairs that were uh, sort of paused in their shedding cycle they are then now released all at the same time so anywhere up into the fifth or sixth month even you can begin experiencing this and what will happen is the all of the hair loss will happen at the same time and that's what makes people 
so frustrated and so afraid because it seems like a lot of hair loss and oftentimes it actually is a lot of hair loss and sometimes you can even think that you're out of the woods and you're not necessarily out of the woods because it doesn't have to start right away it can happen in a prolonged fashion so when it happens that way and the hair actually starts shedding it's referred to as postpartum alopecia and so this is what um, Tigris was was speaking to and there are some things that we can do after we once begin to sort of accept that this happens to at least half of women it doesn't really happen to everybody and that's the thing at the same rate it's worse uh, for others when my head hair shed it I don't recall it being so bad that I had bald spots I just know that that huge thickness that I had that I was loving was no longer quite as thick so um, there are some things that you can do and the third thing that you want to do is you want to my advice to you first of all is is if you know that um, you're going to be delivering you know uh you know in a few months you really want to stop with any stress styling on your hair you want to try to fortify your hair and your diet during the months prior to delivery now obviously you should be doing this anyway because you're bringing the little goober into the world crumb crushers require quite a bit of nutrition and so forth but an added focus should be on hair care no tight hair styling no heat on your hair not putting anything additional on your hair that's going to make it more difficult for your hair to bounce back once the baby comes so you really want to take care of it you want to make sure you're getting your retightenings on time you want to make sure you're not over retightening either prior to this period is very very important um the other thing you want to make sure you do um these are the things prior now once you begin to experience uh postpartum alopecia the things you might want to do next may be uh, you want to begin to um uh make sure that you're getting your retightenings on time because the type of breakage that can occur can be a range of different things it can be a general thinning it can be your root bed seems to get very very thin and a lock start falling out or it gets so thin that the hair that you would normally retighten it, it becomes very thin which is one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you are getting your retightenings because the hair is more susceptible to break when it's loose it becomes a little stronger you know strength in numbers when um, it's actually been retightened number four the fourth thing that you want to keep in mind when you are um, experiencing postpartum alopecia is the need to perhaps combine locks if they get too thin that's a possibility for you now again knowing that the hair growth is going to start to come back in six months um, and you can rebound from this fairly quickly in an unnoticeable way some people may not want to combine locks it's going to depend on where they're located how it's going to affect your parts but if it's severely thinning and you think that it can contribute to giving your root beds more integrity then that's something you might want to consider um, also you may want to supplement with certain vitamins and minerals and the ones that I'm going to suggest um, are um uh, by, uh, b12 uh, biotin folic acid and vitamin e now naturally please do your research and determine what are healthy levels if you are breastfeeding if you're not breastfeeding do the the normal requirement or the daily dosage um you know if you de if you determine that that's appropriate for you but if you are breastfeeding you know you can't just take any and everything including vitamins and supplements minerals and things that are supposedly healthy because the baby's health is paramount at this time and everything that you're taking is passed through the breast milk the other thing that you want to do is if somehow you can't get your retightening right away because oftentimes when you have a baby you get busy you get overwhelmed sometimes you can't even some women have difficulty getting in the shower and getting clean um, I didn't because I did parent directed feeding and that baby was on my schedule but that's a whole nother topic because there were certain consequences to that as well but some people find it difficult to even take a shower or to, to get enough rest or anything like that so I would say 
in the weeks leading up to the pregnancy, look at some do-it-yourself YouTube videos. It can be very simple to do a retightening in certain parts of your hair, especially parts of your hair that you notice are shedding more than other parts. It may be a situation where intervention, you need to take some intervention and, and not have to wait until you go in for a retightening. Something else is important is, as I mentioned this before, remember to eat a balanced diet, a healthy diet, a diet that is rich in antioxidants, a diet that is rich in the proteins. Make sure that you're eating in a, a diet that is not skewed. You don't want to overdo carbohydrates. It needs to be balanced. You want to limit the junk and you want to make sure you drink as much water as possible. The seventh thing that you can do to assist or to sort of impede the, the shedding or to help your hair to become healthier during the postpartum shedding process is to bring in more um, sulfur into your diet. Uh, sulfur is, 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 is very good at assisting health growth, uh, the healthy growing of hair in combination with its production um, influence over keratin. So uh, things that have a lot of sulfur are, un excuse me, onions, garlic, fish, eggs, um, kale, cauliflower. These are the kind of foods that are high in sulfur. You can also go to a website called youngliving.com and get a, an item called sulfurenzyme. sulfurenzyme. And that is a particular supplement um, that you can take that's natural, um, that can help you um, strengthen your hair. The next thing that I want to mention, number eight, the eighth thing that you can do to um, help to, you know, deal with some of the postpartum shedding is to look at the use and integration of essential oils into your hair care regimen. There are a lot of them that you can use that can be very beneficial. There are synergistic blends that you can make using jojoba oil as your base. Again, if you are breastfeeding, don't do this. There are certain oils that you should not be using while breastfeeding. But I know today a lot of women don't breastfeed past six to eight weeks. Some don't breastfeed at all. They're using formula. You need to guard against that formula. But anyway, if you are, if you are, um, then there's some essential oils that can be very helpful for you. Um, geranium is one. Cedar wood is one. Carrot oil is one. Uh, rosemary is a very good one. These help nutrients uh, get into the hair. They also uh, help and protect the follicles. They uh, regenerate new hair growth. They're a combination of synergistic things that um, these essential oils can do for you that can be very, very important. There's something else that I I wrote down that I want to make sure that, that I mention that I don't leave out. Oh, also, the um, nice thing that you can do to help soothe some of the, the hair loss from postpartum alopecia is to begin to integrate MSM into your diet. Uh, it's referred to as MSN. Sometimes it's in capsules. I recommend you get it in the powder form. It's excellent for so many things. Uh, inflammation to hair and nail growth. You can experience a lot of increase in, 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 in hair strength and um, in the growth of your um your uh not that growth of but the health of your skin as well as your fingernails and so forth it's a very fortifying naturally occurring mineral slash something something but it's very very good i think it's methyl sulfamate or something like that a lot of times you would see it in combination with glucosamine for joint health but you can take it uh, it's very bitter tasting. It's almost like an Epsom salt. It's not pleasant. But again, if you're not pregnant, it's something that you, if you're not um, breastfeeding, it's something that you might want to consider. It it works in a wonderful way. I use uh, MSM from time to time. I haven't been consistent with it lately. And in saying this, it reminds me I need to be because I bought that doggone bottle. And I want to say it was like $39, but it is you want to get the powder instead of the um, the capsules, as I mentioned. Be in the powder, a good quality powder is going to just look like snowflakes. Um, number 10, the number 10 thing that you can do is to massage your scalp on a regular basis. And I know you're busy, mom, and you got a lot to do. But through massage, you are helping um, blood, supply, blood supply get to where it needs to get to. 
and a daily or twice daily massage is going to assist you as you're massaging you do want to be nice and gentle you don't want to just be raking through your hair like this if you can hear that pulling on your hair that's not going to assist your situation you want to put your hands on the scalp and you want to just move the scalp move the scalp move the scalp move the scalp i got all these alarms coming up on this computer and it's messing up my view let me cut these things out they got so much do you want to do this do you want to do that later this later that i can't even see see what i'm doing so that's important um hair needs to be washed the other thing you want to do is there's a product that um i came across it's called allocate natural hair growth oil a l i k a y allocate natural hair growth oil many women have successfully used that those with natural hairstyles in an effort to impede the some of the hair loss or to minimize the impact of the hair loss see if you can't find allocate a l i k a y hair growth oil it's supposed to be good and that would probably be something that would be um, allowable if, let's say, in fact, you're unable to really use the essential oils because you're breastfeeding. The other thing, let's see. Um, oh, this is a good idea. This was an idea also that I thought was good. And it reminded me that as I pull on my locks when I'm fooling around with cotton and sometimes I just give up or I'm pulling that one and I see some thinning and I just take the rest of the lot reminded me not to throw them out and to reuse them if you're really creative and you see where the hair is shedding and once the hair starts to regrow itself just do a little plait okay depending upon how long it is and connect your old locks that fall out in other words do not discard the locks that you have okay you want to if they fall out because some women do lose the actual lock you don't want to discard those you want to keep them because you can actually reattach them to your hair as it's as your locks are growing out that's something that's really key uh the other thing you might want to do is do 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 drink nettle tea nettle tea is good for your hair it's also going to be helping to soothe you and helping to relax you lavender and nettle tea will both be good for you watch the lavender however because you're breastfeeding nettle tea should be okay however you should do your own research that's my disclaimer um while i am a healer i am not i'm not one here to take responsibility for um the personal choices that that we make the same way i wouldn't hold anybody else responsible for my personal choices um, always look into your particular situation because like anything else everybody's body is different let me see if i've left anything out number number 12 that would be um be willing to be creative during this time some people experience the loss here some people experience it in the center they experience it in different areas um, be willing to wear hats to be creative to add color through your hair through bandanas or scarves or um, you know light hairstyles where you might just pull something up and put a, a little a bun somewhere or just hold something up at the top of your head if you find that you have very long locks and they're being pulled by certain things the point that i'm trying to make is to make sure that um during this 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 transition that you 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 be okay with being creative the oh the 13th thing that i want to say is um use this as a time uh, for spiritual growth use it as a time to go inward and to detach from your your image a lot of times the more detached we are from our image the the greater degree of peace harmony and tranquility we have regardless of what we're looking like and what we may be dealing with and that can sound easier said than done but it is in fact true and what makes that easier is knowing that you've got this beautiful bundle of joy and there's a cost to that and the, the even more beautiful thing is that your hair is going to grow back it's just a temporary situation and before you know it you'll be back in effect you will you will have resolved some of the thinness the new hair will start to come in and any of these things can be done throughout the journey um, as soon as you deliver that baby and some of them beforehand to help you to make it an easier transition but in the meantime just remember that um as above 
um, um, as, you know, as above, so below, okay, or as within, within, as without. And as you, the more you focus on something that's, that's unpleasant, the more it's going to be magnified in your life. But as well, the more you focus on what's inside, the less you'll be concerned about what's happening on the outside. And it will give you a greater sense of uh, tranquility. It really will. But for those of you who are experiencing the uh, dramatic uh, postpartum hair shedding blues, my heart goes out to you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, comments in particular, because I've said just about much of what I really know on this topic. But if you have any other questions um, that are somehow related or you have any comments or things that you want to share that you know work, please let us know. I would greatly appreciate it. And as you continue on this journey, may the force of light and love be with you. May you share in the abundance and prosperity that you were designed to as you birth this new little being, this little beautiful little crumb crusher into the world. You're with Tunisia Ali of Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri. If you want to reach me, ButterflyTransformations.com. Also, you can consider subscribing to my other channel that deals with issues that are related to the spiritual aspect of your being and the fact that you are a multidimensional being. And that is Butterfly Transformations on YouTube. Have a wonderful, productive, peaceful, and loving day.